Welcome back to Barley and Hops. I'm George, and I'm so glad to be with you again today. We have recently surpassed the 25,000 subscriber level. Now, that's very important to us and our community. We're growing, so I, my appreciation goes out to every one of you who has subscribed and shared us with your friends. Please keep it coming. All right. Oh, don't forget to comment below. We, uh, we answer or comment on all comments, uh, your ideas, your thoughts, your desires, uh, and your questions. Now, today's video is going to be on uh, controllers. And we've done a lot of videos about controllers, about PID controllers, the proportional integral derivative controllers. And today we have one that is very similar to that. Uh, it is a PID for lack of better words. Uh, and it's the Inkbird ITC 608T. Very, very powerful and very, very useful, but I want to make sure that you use it for the proper process. Now, it comes with a really good, oh, there it is. It comes with a really good book, a uh, little written instructions, but as with uh, most of these, they can be confusing, uh, and we're going to try to deconfuse that for you. Okay. Oh, by the way, remember, there's no right way to do the wrong thing. That's my words of wisdom for today. No right way to do the wrong thing. And my quickest example I'll, sh I'll share with you is, George, if I'm using amylase to convert starch to fermentable sugars, can I just throw it in as I'm steeping my corn? Uh, you know, bring it up to, to hydrolyze it, which you can bring it up to almost a simmer. Now, that's a little over 200 degrees. Uh, no, you can't. There's no right way to do that. Uh, it's got to be at 155 degrees because that's when amylase is active. Uh, anything above 165, it kills it. Anything below uh, about 148, it's dormant. So uh, can I put it in and kind of save myself a step? No. Nope. No right way to do the wrong thing, so remember that. Okay. Now here's what this thing can do. Now, this thing can control temperature. It can also control humidity. And it can also control temperature and humidity at the same time. So some of the process that this lends itself to, and one of them is not distilling, uh, unless you're using a very small distiller, like maybe a three gallon, you know, one gallon, three gallon, where you, know, you're, where you don't need a whole lot of power or you know, amperage uh, in order to run that still. So because this is rated at 1800 watts at 15 amps, and you don't want to exceed that. So, for something that's really low on that scale, you can, you can use it. Uh, but anything above that, so if you're going to a five gallon, uh, anything, like if you're gonna need a 2,000 watt heater element, I wouldn't use this. It, it, it's probably not gonna do what you're looking for, but here's what it's perfect for. If you got a freezer and you're looking for a chamber in order to ferment, uh, if you're gonna use like a lager for you making a beer, you can use a lager yeast and you gotta ferment at a lower temperature like 48 degrees, 50 degrees, and you wanna use a, an empty freezer for that, well this is perfect for that because you can control that temperatures precisely. And it can, you can also set a compressor delay because you know you don't want your compressor to come on and go off all the time. You can put a delay on that so that that doesn't happen. Now, um, there are some other very good benefits that this device will help you with. Uh, one of them being fermentation. So if you're trying to maintain a temperature above you know, whatever the ambient temperature is, um, let's say 68 to 72 degrees and it's in your basement and you put a heater blanket on it, you want to, this is perfect for that. It's also perfect for other processes. Uh, if you're an artisan and you're looking to maintain a certain humidity level, uh, you can do that. Uh, so it does heating, cooling, and that's the temperature fo uh, function. It does humidity or it does heating, cooling, and humidity together. So, but we're going to focus on temperature, heating, and cooling. So that's going to set us free today. <clears throat> I'm going to show you what these, now these are going to run you about $65 to $75 on Amazon. Uh, very well worth it if it fits your process. Uh, and this is what it looks like. Um, comes right out of the box looking just like this. It's got a screen over here. It's got the set value and the uh, PV. 
process value. I, I always call it the perceived value because that's what it senses. So you got your set value at the bottom, you put the numbers in there that you want, and your perceived value at the top is what it's actually feeling. Uh, we've also got, oh yeah, we got work one, and it's marked, and work two. Work one is heating, work two is cooling. Pretty simple. And on the bottom now, you've got these two. We've got P1 and P, whoop, yeah, and P2. P1 and P2. Uh, P1 and P2 are for the sensors. P1 is your uh, heating temperature, and this is actually a thermistor, the RT25C. We'll explain more about that. And for P2 is your humidity sensor. So you plug this into P2. But we're not going to use this today because we're not going to test humidity right now. We're, we're, we're going to go straight with temperature because we want to control temperature in whatever process it is you're going to be trying to control. Now, this thing is capable of controlling between negative 40 and about 212. So you can see right away that it doesn't lend itself to, let's say, a Bakelite oven uh, where you need extremely high temperatures. Now, the PID would do that because we can control a higher amperage and a lot larger um, heating elements. Uh, but with this one, uh, it's, uh, it, it lends itself more to the... the I guess I call minor processes where you're really looking for a specific temperature to control, but you're not looking to go extreme, okay? So you know what it comes with, and when it does arrive and you take it out of the box, uh, it, you plug it in, you can start right away. It's really smart, so if you don't have a sensor plugged into it, it'll come on, but it won't read anything, you just see lines. Uh, it just means that once you plug a sensor into it, it knows the sensor is there, it'll start to work. Whether it's the temperature sensor or the humidity sensor. If you plug the humidity sensor in, it's going to give you relative humidity. If you plug the temperature sensor in, it's going to give you the temperature. We, we're, we're there already? Okay, let's get, let's get moving. Um, we're going to get in close, and I'm going to show you everything that it can do, and I'm going to put a light on work one, and I'm going to put a light on work two, because this thing is also intelligent enough to know the difference between whether it needs power for heating or power for cooling. So, since it separates itself, it's up to you to decide what you want to use it for. You can use it for one or the other or both. If you're going to use it for just heating, let's say for instance in your basement that's 55 degrees and you want it to be 68, just use work one. Plug in your heating blanket, your heating band, or whatever the case may be, whatever it is you're using, uh, and it will control heat. Uh, so it, let's say, for instance, you want to control cool. You've got an air conditioner hooked up into a small unit, or you're using it with a, a freezer, an empty freezer, you're using it for a fermentation chamber, whatever the case may be. And you want to maintain a cool area in a warm ambient area. Oh, well, then you would just use work too. Now, if you want to do both, you want it to come on and heat up to a certain temperature, and if it gets too hot, you want the cooler to come on and cool it back down, then you can use both. And we're going to, matter of fact, we'll demonstrate that, but uh, I would primarily use it for, for my purposes, uh, probably just heat. I'm not you're really cooling most of the time. Okay. Let's move in close and uh, we'll demonstrate all of this for you. Okay, to begin with, this is the, uh, it's an R25C, uh, not an RT. So an R25C, and what that really means, it's a, uh, it's a thermistor that's used as a temperature probe. Um, the R25 uh, references 25 degrees Celsius is its reference point. Um, and it's an NTC, which is a negative temperature coefficient as opposed to a positive temperature coefficient. There you go, got technical on you real quick. Uh, the, the benefit of the negative uh, temperature coefficient is uh, its accuracy um, and its response. So uh, that's why they use those. And they're actually uh, a lot cheaper and they're easier to uh, replace. You can, you can get one of these online anywhere. Again, these are gonna run you about 65, 75 bucks. And, if something should happen to this, remember it will not withstand flame or extremely high heat, but it is waterproof. 
And so you can dip it in the liquid. Um, but if something should go wrong with it, you can exchange it out real quick. So we'll plug this in. Now, matter of fact, what we'll do is we'll, we'll plug it in. I'll show you what happens. Um, when you turn the unit on and you've got nothing there, uh, you see it, it, doesn't, it doesn't register anything, just a bunch of lines, or dashes. And when you plug in P1, it will automatically, it knows, that, oh, that's a temperature sensor. Now, here's the red light that comes on that means that work one is actually working right now. That's the red light. If you're in setup mode for, to set the parameters, and we're going to do that, this small yellow light in the middle will come on. And if it's work two that's operating, the green light will come on. And we're going to show you that as well. So we'll just leave our temperature sensor hanging. Uh, and it's actually reading 69.6 degrees Fahrenheit. I've got it set to 71.0 degrees Fahrenheit. And if I plug in a light under work one, you'll notice that, you see that light come on? There. That means that work one is operating. So if that was my heater element, my heater element would now be operational. Now at the same time, uh, we can do both of these outlets or these outputs at the same time to give you a real good demonstration on how it works. We'll plug in work two and you'll notice there's no light comes on it. it see, it's the red light means that work one's operating. If it was a green light, then work two would be operating. Now, if we grab our temperature probe and you watch this and I hold it and my temperature starts to rise, as my temperature rises, you'll notice work one goes out. The red light goes out. Now, if it gets three degrees above, you notice the green light comes on, which means that the light on this side came on. This would be my cool. You see, I'll... there we go, light out, light on. But you'll notice that in between these two, and we're going to go right into the parameters now. So let me show you how this actually works, because it's very, very intuitive and it's really smart. If you push the set, you can set the temperature by pushing the up arrow or the down arrow. And I'll set it to 82, it's reading 78. And when I do that, it goes right into heat. So it notices the difference between these two and these temperatures, and it knows which one to turn on. And, of course, which one to turn off. Oh, okay, now, if you're gonna operate this, it's just right out of the box. All you gotta do is just push the set button one time, and then you can maneuver your temperature up or down to your desired set. And press set and it'll store that. Now let's say for instance you set this up and you want to set the parameters in here. Um, <clears throat> already there's a three degree variance between heat and cool. So we're set at 73 degrees. The uh, and it's perceived value 74 degrees. When it gets to 73 degrees, that green light won't go out until it gets to 70 degrees because it's already preset, factory set for a three degree difference. If you want to tighten that up, you can push and hold the set button, and you'll enter the uh, the modes. Now this is your temperature set, and we've already set that. That's T. That's supposed to be T S. That's the way they indicate that. Okay, now he, here's the heating differential. You'll see it's three degrees. Let's drop that to one degree so that if there's a one degree difference, can we go? It's as far as we can go, one degree. So if there's a one degree difference between perceived temperature and the temperature set, it's gonna activate. Press it again, and now this is the cooling differential value. If we set that one to one, if there's a difference of one degree, it's going to activate. Now, you go to the next one, high temperature alarm, and that's set at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. That's its max. So at 212 degrees, if it hits that, it's going to alarm, and you'll hear a beep, 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 beep. The low alarm is factory set at negative 40, and if it hits that temperature, you'll hear it beep, 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 beep. Now, we got one more to go to. This is a compressor delay time. 
So if you are using a compressor as an example, you're using the, and I use this as the example all the time, is a, a freezer and you're using it for a fermentation chamber. You want to set that zero to a figure of maybe three or four or five minutes between shut off and shut on so that you don't overpower your compressor. You give it an opportunity to balance out. All right. Now we got the next one is temperature calibration. And that is the temperature calibration would be whether you want, whether you have a perceived value that's different because of your temperature sensor. Uh, and you want that to be either one degree, you want it to display one degree less than what it is because it's a little off or one degree more. Uh, that's just to adjust your temperature. We've got this one set at zero. So we're assuming that our temperature probe is uh, sensing the correct temperature. You can actually set that. The next one would be centigrade or Fahrenheit. This one is set to Fahrenheit and it beeps when it changes. And then when you change that, all other functions in here change to centigrade. So we'll leave that back at Fahrenheit. And then last but not least, we've got TR. This is the timer mode. Uh, in zero, it is the, uh, it's a simple mode. If you put it in one, it would uh, be, you would change it to the continuous timer mode, which is a separate function all in itself. And TR2 uh, is going to be a trigger timer mode, which is, again, something totally different. It's in, there are in the instructions. And that's when you're using it as um, humidity and or uh, heating, cooling, and humidity altogether. So you've got very, we've got several functions. We'll leave that at zero. Push set. It goes back. If you leave it alone for about 10 to 20 seconds, it'll go back to its its normal display screen and normal function or you can push set and hold it and there you go so real simple just a real quick review if you've got it for the first time and you want to set it push set you can up down you can change those values push set again and it goes back you can also it's set to three degrees Fahrenheit there we go and cooling offset and it's set at three degrees Fahrenheit for heat. So let's go back, we'll set that. There we go. And set and save all of that. Now you'll notice that our cooling differential is only one degree. Our heating differential is only one degree. So those are the three functions you can get to immediately. Um, to run your Inkberg ITC608T. I hope you found this useful. The ITC608T, um, if it fits your process, it's a very, very powerful, accurate tool to use. Um, but remember, there's no right way to do the wrong thing. So use it for what it's designed for. Take advantage of its capabilities and take your brewing, fermenting, distilling process to the next level. So we'll be back and we'll talk more about some of the other functions that it has on another video. So without further ado, we always say happy distilling. <laughs>